Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Cole Kakamis and welcome to another video on the channel. Today, I wanna to talk about a question that I hear a lot from new and aspiring coders, which is what programming language do I learn first? When I first started a program a few years back, I was really just lost and I didn't know where to start. I eventually went with Java, which definitely wasn't a great choice for me. I never really enjoyed it and I only picked it because it was the only language I'd heard of. When I was learning the basic syntax, I found it really boring and because of that, I kind of just got detached from programming. It wasn't until a while that I actually got back into it and found what I love at the moment is JavaScript and really became a better coder overall. So let's talk about end goals. Programming languages are really focused on the platform that you're working with, which is why it is so important to figure out what you want to do with it. Do you want to build websites? Do you want to build mobile apps, games, etc., etc.? Just find something that you're passionate about and figure out what is actually used to build it. There are just so many languages, technologies, frameworks, libraries, that it's super hard to know what is the best one and what are all their uses, right? And so it makes it extremely overwhelming, especially for a beginner. This is the thing that makes people think that programming isn't for them. It's because they look at this and like, whoa, the, you know, I have to know all this stuff. And the truth is that no, you only need to pick one or two things that you really like to do with programming and find a language, maybe find a framework that really works well for you. I would guarantee you that every single good programmer out there has gone through this exact same stage. As an example, let's say that your end goal was to build mobile apps. Like I mentioned earlier, don't be overwhelmed with the amount of options. With mobile development, there is two main ways to go about it. You can either build native, which means just go with iOS or just go with Android, or you could do a cross-platform, basically using one programming language to make it for the two operating systems. If you wanna go with native iOS development, you would learn something like Apple's Swift language, or if you wanted to go with just strictly Android development, you learn something like Java. And now with the cross-platform, there is a bunch of different options out there, which is why I don't wanna to get too in-depth because this is just an example, but there's things like React Native, Flutter, which all have their own programming languages inside of them. Sure, you could go a really general route and just learn something like Python, which is extremely easy for a beginner to pick up, but you're not gonna get much value out of it if you're doing something very specific like mobile development, which it does not really work for. Now, if you don't have an end goal and you kind of just want to dip your feet in the water with programming, see if this is something that you'd enjoy, I think in that case, it's okay to go with a more general language. And that's because programming languages are different in their syntax, but the foundational topics are actually pretty similar. Once you pick up one language, it's gonna be that much easier to go on to the next one and the next one and the next one. Also something to keep in mind when you're first starting off is you can just pick something that works rather than the absolute best language possible because there are some extremely difficult languages that are going to be pretty much impossible to learn as a beginner. As an example for game development, there is two main engines that are used to create games, which are Unity and Unreal. Unity uses a language called C Sharp, which is relatively easy to learn as a beginner. It's very user friendly, whereas something like Unreal uses C++, which is arguably one of like the most difficult programming languages and you don't want to start off with that. So it is definitely okay to kind of start off in the beginning with less powerful technologies that are easier to learn because you can work up to those harder ones. Remember that you don't learn to swim at the deep end of the pool. Sure, you could do it, eventually you learn, but it's gonna be that much harder and it's gonna waste that much more time. You're not gonna be a pro in a year. I've been programming for three years and I can barely center a div in CSS. Once you decide the language that you're gonna learn, the next step is to find the resources that you're going to use. This really depends on what your learning style and your budget is. You may prefer to learn by reading or watching videos or having a more hands-on approach. You can spend money on courses or books or just use free resources like YouTube. But the big thing though is it's not the money that you're gonna spend, but the time you're gonna spend that really matters in learning programming. Your time is really precious, so make sure that you're using it wisely. So some of my favorite resources in my years of learning have been Udemy, which is a website that offers both free and paid courses on not just programming, but pretty much any topic that you wanna learn. There's some exceptional instructions on the site, but there's definitely some pretty poor ones. So make sure you do your research before you actually go out and buy a course, but do know that there are some really good ones on there. They do offer a 30 day money back guarantee so that if you do buy a course and you're like, you know what, this isn't for me, or this constructor is just not really teaching this well, you can get all your money back, no questions asked. If you're deciding to learn web development, I'll link to a Udemy course in the description 
that I've been using the past few months that I've really enjoyed. YouTube is also just an awesome resource. You know, every video is free. There's a bunch of videos covering a wide variety of topics, but the only thing that I would say about it is that it's definitely less organized than something like Udemy, which is why I do prefer it. So my favorite creators here are Brad Traversy, The Net Ninja, and Web Dev Simplified, which I'll link in the description. You could also take a more traditional route and get like a computer science degree, but remember that that is definitely not required because the degree really doesn't teach you much more than just some foundational programming theories. That's not to say it's useless because like I mentioned earlier, knowing one language makes it that much easier to understand the next one. If it's in your financial reach and you wanna go into an industry, you know, you wanna work a job as a software engineer, I'd say it may be a good choice. Also a really good resource is documentation. Every single programming language does have some official docs, which basically goes over everything in the language, what everything does, etc., etc. Now they won't necessarily be teaching you exactly how to build projects, but you can be able to see just the bits and pieces and see how everything really works. Codecademy is a site that I've used in the past, which I actually do enjoy a lot. It has a built-in editor, so you actually get to see what code you're working on, very hands-on. And overall, I think it's awesome for learning the basics, but they don't really go into very advanced stuff. Free Code Camp is another website that's very similar to Codecademy. I've never personally used it, but I've only ever heard good things about it. It teaches you in a very similar way by doing coding in the browser, but what it really emphasizes on is actually building your own projects or expanding on the ones they teach you. And that is the number one way to learn, is just by building your own stuff. You're only ever gonna learn so much from just a course or a video, so make sure that you're always building your own apps. Programming is a really awesome skill to have. There are plenty of languages out there, so make sure that you pick one that really goes along with your end goals. I'm not gonna lie to you, the road ahead is going to be long. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be a lot of barriers, but I know you get through it. So guys, that just about wraps up the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on bell notifications so you're notified next time I upload. On that note, I'm out, take care.